Congratulations to all the American people, you have a new president. <clears throat> I've been saying this for some time that uh, the next decade, the most important leadership on the planet will be business leadership. But you did not imagine that a businessman will get elected as a president. The political forces on the planet being in practicing democracy, slowly reduce themselves to a certain arithmetic. They learn to work the electoral arithmetic. This keeps happening in India or has been happening till recently. People are always counting before elections, they're making a list of en masse voting. Which are the blocks of people that we can make them feel discriminated, we can make them feel insecure, we can make them feel threatened in some way so that they will vote not as individuals but as communities. These communities can be of religion or religious, it may be on the religious basis, racial basis, caste, creed, but it has become the habit of various political forces across the world to pick on minority communities, make them feel insecure and make them vote en masse. Unfortunately, similar language has been evolving in United States as it has been in India in the past. But you have to give it to the intelligence of the common authors that they defeat this once in a way. That is, we must understand that democracy means the rule of majority. Rule of majority does not mean crushing the minorities. Rule of majority means you don't divide people on the basis of their beliefs or their color or their creed or whatever other basis you find. When people vote as individuals, only then there is a true democracy. Otherwise, we are practicing feudalism through the drama of democracy. The world is moving in this direction that the people of the world are rejecting paraphernalia of ideologies which don't work, decorative statements which mean nothing to nobody, high-flung language <laughs> but not good literature <laughs> which doesn't make one's life. The people of the world are rejecting this. I think the previous elections in India, the Brexit and the selection of Donald J. J. Trump as the President of United States, all these things are a clear statement in this direction. People are looking for economic well-being. They are not interested 
in effusive statements of correctness. The world is moving from very fancy nuances to simply… simply practical way of doing things. In this effort, it is important or in this moment of things that are naturally happening, it is important that certain probity is brought, that individual people who get to the helm of nations must maintain a very high level of integrity. As I've said during my tour in America, during this Inner Engineering book tour repeatedly. Unfortunately, for a whole lot of people around the world, for a whole lot of people, not just in Middle East, for a lot of people, America means source of war. I think it's time America as a nation changes this image and creates an image that America means wealth, America means well-being, America means an ideal way of living. Above all, America means help to everybody because if you don't teach everybody around the world how to generate wealth, we will not live in a wealthy world. Why is it important to live in a wealthy world? It is just that if you alone become wealthy, naturally people will keep sniping at you. Those who have nothing to lose and on the street will naturally throw stones at people who are living in expensive glass homes. It's best that your neighbor also has a good home. It's very important <laughs> If you generate wealth across the world, this is also an insurance that you will live well, everybody will live well. Otherwise, the way technology is evolving, just a small nation with certain capabilities can derail the process of administration, businesses, banks, everything with a certain skill. Slowly we're realizing this. It's unfortunate that major nations today are talking about if you disrupt our cyberspace, we will disrupt your cyberspace. This is not where it should be going. Where it should be going is, you will not want to disrupt because you also have something worthwhile. If you have nothing worthwhile, only then you get these ideas that I want to disrupt you. If you also have something worthwhile, you don't want to disrupt anybody because you know you also have something to lose. So let's create a world, let America and the new leadership in America focus on creating a world which is well. When people are well, they value their well-being. They wouldn't want their well-being to be disrupted in any way. It was beautiful to watch how whatever the acrimony, the bitterness that we have seen in the last twelve months, yesterday came to a culmination with utmost graciousness from both sides. However painful or bitter, bitter one may be, but being able to conduct themselves with a certain amount of graciousness is most welcome and it's truly fantastic that both sides behave that way and this is where democracy matters. That never before in the history of this world, before democracies got established, has it happened that transfer of power happened without blood spilling. Now before it happened, this is the most beautiful aspect of democracy 
that doesn't matter, there is a time to fight and there is a time to work together <laughs> It needs a… there's something spiritual about this, I'm saying <laughs> The acrimony and bitterness and the viciousness with which the elections were fought and yesterday's gracious statements are… are spiritual, I would say <laughs> Truly fantastic.